Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country, God is good, all the time. And I'm here for my weekly Monday this and that video. And for those of you who are new, it's just a weekly vlog that I do to let you know what's going on, give you some updates, especially on some videos that may have just recently published and let you know of things that are going on and what's coming out down the road. So let's get started on the topics of today. Now before I actually get into these particular topics, I do want to say one thing about when it comes to contacting us. The absolute best place to contact us, to get a hold of us, is through email. Please do not send any private messages through any other social media sites, even if you can find me on any of them. Some of them have been deleted. Some of them I might be open, but I'm not on anymore. So it's always best to use the email, as, and you can always find our contact information in the description box down below. And our email address is raincountryhomestead at gmail.com. Now please, when you go to contact us through that, please let it be personal one-to-one -one interactions. I would prefer that you did not send me group emails and forwards, especially not forwards, because I simply don't have time for that. So please only personal, private interactions when you come that way. Now that doesn't count comments. Please put your comments all you want down below and uh, I will interact that way too. Okay, so let's get on to this stuff. So what's going on today is I'm going to be canning up some of the tomatoes from my garden and I do like to can up just plain tomatoes. I do add lemon juice to bring up that acidity because I'm gonna hot water bath the, the tomatoes. That is all I add to them. When I do a quart jar, I'm adding one quarter cup to every quart jar of lemon juice. You can also add lime juice, which is a great option, especially if you think you're going to use them for making salsa or something where you want more of that flavor, but really you don't taste that that much. That's just to help better preserve your tomatoes because they're just not as acidic these days as they used to be, apparently. So it's just an added measure. I didn't do it for years and have never had problems, but just to be on the safe side, I go ahead and do that. Now, you might be wondering why my tomatoes don't look very good bright red and you might see chunks of bright red well that's because most of the tomatoes i grow are this color they're either black or they're purple this this is a purple tomato even though they won't look very different and this is a black this is a brandy wine and then this is what we believe to be the uh, purple cherokee so those have been a great tomato for us and i will use any tomato that will grow for me in my sauces in my chilies and so on so I always like to have that includes salsa too I always like to have a bunch of just plain tomatoes on hand because I use that for making barbecue sauce I use that for making chili I use that for making any kind of Italian sauce and so on so I like to keep it plain so I can do whatever I want to now the other thing I'll also be doing with the tomatoes uh, after I do this batch here, the rest of the tomatoes will be going into making some chili. So I've got a whole bunch of kidney beans right here uh, soaking and then tomorrow I'm going to be cooking them up and some of them I'll be canning plain so I can have them on hand for doing something like making my homemade tamale pie which is one of our favorite meals so I like having some home some that are canned up even though I store a lot of the dried beans it's really nice to have some canned up there so they're already cooked tamale pie I can whip up pretty quickly uh, from scratch as long as I have my kidney beans or whatever beans I'm going to be using and it already cooked and ready to go so that's why I do like to have some canned and I'll be doing that with some and then the rest will go into making some homemade chili that I'll also be canning up for instant meals having some meals set aside as ready to go meals makes life a lot easier for those days where things just get too busy or you forgot to pull something out of the freezer or whatever it is in fact that just happened the other day where I needed to pull out one of my cans of chili to heat up for Patrick and just cut up a little cheese and onions and there we go, instant meal. So I do that with a few other things too, but mostly chili. Sometimes I'll do that with soup and I've also been doing the meatballs. That actually is a really uh, pretty nice thing to have on hand too. They're already cooked and ready to go. I just need to make some gravy or sauce to go with them and put them on whatever we plan on, put it on rice, noodles, etc. Oh, and by the way, for those who are new to canning like tomatoes, 
Again, you can hot water bath can them as long as you add that little bit of acid to them. I just chop them up with my little hand chopper. As you can see right here, and if I can get the find the link to it, if it's still available, I'll put it down below. I just chop them up, and then, but you can process in your blender. One thing I like the chopper a little bit better is you don't end up with as much air bubbles in there that you have to work out. But then I fill up the jar, work the air bu bubbles out as best I can with a chopstick, and then I'm gonna, I process it for about 35 minutes for a quart in the hot water bath method that way. And then for the chili and the plain beans, I like to do pint-sized jars for both of those. And then I process those via pressure canning for 75 minutes. Okay, then I wanted to give you an update. Some of you might have just seen the video that came out last Wednesday on the pineapple and black cherry zucchini. So I did make some pina colada creamsicles with that pineapple zucchini. And I haven't actually tried the, the creamsicles, but Patrick's been eating them. He seems to think they're okay. But what I did do was I added some more pineapple juice to the blender as I was mixing that in there and then adding the heavy cream powder and the whole milk powder to that as well and uh, just to add more of that pineapple flavor but uh, I'll still be doing some more experimentations but mostly what I wanted to come back to was and I had thought a couple of these ideas and I meant to mention them in that video and forgot well one thing I thought was consider cooking the zucchini in those in the juices and then dehydrating it and see how that turns out or like someone else suggested taking the already dehydrated zucchini and then rehydrating it by cooking it in the straight juice because that way you're going to get a more intense flavor which i did try yesterday and it did turn out really good i didn't add any sugar no lemon juice i just put the juice in there and i kept having to add the juice as it was cooking now it takes a while to cook dehydrated zucchini to get it to where it's soft it always seems to retain a little bit more texture no matter how much you cook it than it's going to from using a fresh zucchini but you will get a much better flavor overall it so depending on how you're going to use it that might be the best method uh, but it was it was pretty tasty and these still had the skins on them and i didn't mind it like that so i just cooked up a little bit just to try it and yes, it was great that I didn't have to add any more sugar because the flavor was intense enough as it was just using the straight juice as is. And that's all. And then the other thing I want to say about dehydrated zucchini is no matter how much you cook it, it's never going to get as big as it was before you dehydrated it. So you can, not only will it not get as soft, it won't get as big, but you might like that texture a little bit better depending on what you plan on using it in and then speaking of zucchini i've still been working through a bunch of it De decided to go ahead and dehydrate up even more zucchini i keep saying i'm not going to do any more and then i decide to go ahead and put up more the more uses i find for it dried but the fresh zucchini one of my favorite things i've been doing lately now i talked last week i believe it was about the grilled cheese sandwiches using the zucchini slices as a bread replacement that's one the other thing and i've mentioned this before but i added something to it is sauteing the chopped zucchini in my homemade wine it doesn't matter what flavor and i've been using this almond oil by chosen foods that i got through misfits market because i got a really good deal on it even better than their same size avocado oil i get from costco and then adding the mother earth products three onion soup dip mix to it when i go to saute to add a little bit more flavor and that's been pretty good i've really been enjoying that as a lunch as well and sometimes I go ahead and eat dinner and I did that last night I had it for lunch then I had it again for dinner because I like it so much and I'm still trying to work through the zucchini anyway then another update I wanted to share now this goes back to a video that's at least three years old now and that was the one I did on my original antibiotic recipe and that was the one using all nasturtium leaves I believe in that video I did mention a couple others like the oregano and the echinacea and i have made an antibiotic extract using all three nasturtium oregano and 
echinacea leaves but i also have a far more recent video that i did on a whole list of natural antibiotics from herbs to honey to whatever so i'm going to link to that video down below but the reason i'm bringing up this old video is for some reason it just went viral so a lot of people are going in there and commenting and, and asking questions and saying things and i want to just say this for anyone who's new remember that is an older video and i'm always changing things as i go i don't even use glycerin anymore when I'm even though it's food grade glycerin and it's it is safe but what's safer and healthier yet is raw honey so whenever I use anything if I'm not going to use just straight homemade wine or vodka or rum for making an extract be it medicinal or for flavoring if I decide to mix it with something else I don't use glycerin anymore I use raw honey which works just as well and is far more healthy so especially for medicinal ones now for some flavored extracts you may not want to use the honey because it does kind of have its own distinct flavor where glycerin is sweet but it doesn't have a flavor to it the way honey does so you just got to kind of balance it out and and find out what works best for you there's not one right way that's best for everyone whether it comes to the type of herbs they use in their extract or the type of solvent they use to make it you just got to find what works best for you what's available for you so on and so forth and that's something i like to say quite a bit check out that video on the natural antivirals and then you can also check out that old video i did on that recipe if you want I think I go over that recipe anyway in the list that I have on the antibiotics and there's more lists coming out and I have more lists it's all in its own separate playlist so different lists of natural remedies for specific ailments and I'm working on that and building on it and with that in mind the other thing I've been doing is needing to get more of my herb profiles out I didn't get as much done this summer as I planned on doing because there's been so much other stuff going on but I'm really going to be ramping it up and getting caught up uh, trying to get more of those out because I have a whole long list of many more to do even though I have a long list of ones I've already done and that's going to go the ones I need to get done first are going to are the ones that go hand in hand with the seeds I already have on my store and the seeds that will be coming out so by the time you're seeing this video I have a several new seeds up on our Etsy store remember that Etsy store link is the first link you'll see in the description box down below and also that little red flower that pops up oh, here at the end of the video that's also the link directly to our store if you click on that little red nasturtium flower it takes you right there I just added chicory I just added the whorehound and the coreopsis these are the coreopsis video will be coming out soon it or is already shot uploaded and scheduled to publish I'll be shooting the chicory one either today or tomorrow and then i'll be doing one on whorehound i still need to do one on anise hyssop which is another seed it's not going to be new to my store but i didn't get any seed last year but this year i should have some i hope to do a video on that pretty soon I will eventually be getting more echinacea seed up on the store so you just got to keep watching this is as things come in and as I get the seeds ready then they get listed so you can always keep watching if, especially if it's a seed you know I've carried before and if you don't see it on there just wait it might be back up it just depends on the harvest I get of seeds for the year oh and one more thing you've been following me for a little while you know that i came up with a new laundry detergent recipe which is actually my multi-purpose uh, cleaning powder recipe because i use it for a lot of things well i need to get making some more for the laundry because this is what i'm down to uh, i have i keep a jar in each bathroom and a jar here in the kitchen and then a jar in the laundry room because they get used for so many things and so far it is my best recipe for laundry detergent for scouring powder i've even washed dishes by hand with it works great i've even used it uh, in the two times since I've created this recipe uh, that I've run my electric dishwasher I've used it in there very very pleased with it so if you're interested in that recipe I'll go ahead and link to that down below and any other videos I think might be helpful on any of these topics that maybe I just forgot to mention such as the pineapple zucchini I'll link to that down below as well so don't forget to open that description box by clicking on either show more right down here below my channel name or that little arrow you'll see down here on this side if you're on a smart device that will open the description box so you can see all the links and contact information that we have in there all right well I hope you enjoyed my this and that for the week thanks for watching take care and God bless